Tonight, we introduce you to one of Baton Rouge's most giving citizens who is re-entering politics. We'll talk about recruiting at Baton Rouge Police, and the superintendent is here to talk about buses, cafeteria workers, and what's ahead. Roll it, Kyle. Well, you know how hot it's been outside lately, but that's not the hottest topic in East Baton Rouge Parish right now. It involves our most precious resource, our kids, <laughs> and what's happening at the East Baton Rouge Parish school system. The head man there, Dr. Cito Narcisse, superintendent of schools, is here with us to talk about what's going on. So everybody already knows the backstory that <laughs> we're, there's been issues with buses and you have been in dialogue with bus drivers. And then we'll get to the cafeteria uh, staff thing in a minute, but let's talk about this. How did it get this bad? Yeah, so the, the, the reality is um, the school system haven't done a great job on a transportation plan since 2006. Okay. Uh, so we haven't been purchasing buses. We haven't been, uh, you know, uh, getting our fleet ready. And so what has happened is any time that we would get a, a bus, the only time we ever had a plan to get buses was in, um, through a grant. Okay. So if we didn't get a grant, we wouldn't do anything. Yeah. And so the system has been able to get away with that over time. And so, you know, as I tell folks, you know, there's always a breaking point. Yeah. And um, what ended up happening is now we, you know, we have buses yeah. that don't work. Yeah. Uh, we have a fleet about just about 500, but 200 of the buses don't work. Um, we also have, just like every other district in the nation, we have vacancies. We have 161 vacancies. And right. I just... Just yesterday, the New York Post and Fox Business News wrote about, that. you know, us in Kansas City yeah. and Chicago and all of them having the same set of problems. And so, um, you know, we have to figure out ways to not only retain bus drivers that come in our system, but also have buses working to pick up all the children in Baton Rouge. So down 100 <clears throat> bus drivers. Mm -hmm. Did nobody notice a problem when it was down 15? 20, well, 25? Yeah, so so it was actually, the, the dip started right after COVID. So we, okay. we were probably just about 600 and it went down to 400 and it yeah. just kept keep going down. Yeah. And in some way, shape or form, as we were continue to review, it almost became, well, well, okay, if we can't have bus drivers, then let's worry about trailers and those yeah. are extra drivers to pick up. And so it's just, the system just compensated. So as we saw the numbers going down, <clears throat> we started to say, how do we keep recruiting? Yeah. How do we get more bus drivers to get CDL licensed faster? And so that's when it started to exacerbate. And, and the unfortunate part is, the reality is, we didn't put a lot of focus on transportation. Why? But that's the that's yeah, question. That's correct. You're coming off the summer. <clears throat> From May to August, mm -hmm. how could this still be a problem? Yeah, well, I mean, the problems that we can't solve is the issue we have is a supply and demand issue, right? Okay. So it's twofold. So it's not necessarily just having buses to drive, but drivers to bring in. And that shortage is happening all over the state. I mean, I talk to my colleagues in Jefferson Parish or Shreveport, other districts that are just similar size as us, and other parishes across the state, and everybody can't hire enough bus drivers, especially when you have a district that has, you know, 40,000 plus students yeah. and with all this complexity of yeah. choices and stuff. So that became more exacerbated because of supply and demand. Right now we've had out uh, um, uh, paying for vendors and leasing buses to get buses, but nobody can sell it to us. And, it, <clears throat> but it appeared your district looked unprepared for this. It. it it was not a good look. And mm -hmm. so what would you say to parents who quite frankly are pissed off right now because mm -hmm. they're having to adjust their schedules based upon this and that they should have had more warning before the beginning of the year that this stuff was gonna happen. What do you say to them? Yeah, well, I, I tell folks, I take full responsibility. I'm the superintendent, the buck stops with me. Um, there are breakdowns that happen that were as a part of our fault yeah. in terms of notifying parents, but that still wouldn't have solved our problem, sure. right? And I think that what I'm trying to frame to people is that is the challenge that we had. Right now we run a, a bus system that has two tiers. Mm -hmm. So either you're picked up in the morning at around 7 a.m. to go to school. Some or kids are catching the bus at 5.30. Yeah, and that's if you're going what they call a transfer, right? Okay. So a, a transfer site is where a child will come from one part of the parish, go to a transfer site to go to another school, right? Okay. Especially if it's a school of choice, because our kids get to choose schools 
uh, all around the city. And so uh, that is a complexity. And that was happening with elementary kids, and we wanted to move away from that. So we said, let's not have elementary transfers. Let's do it you know, for older kids because it's easier for that. You do have a solution that uh, we're going to talk about here in terms of the schedule. And uh, before we go into break, flat out, do you have, and we'll get into what it is, do you have a solution? Absolutely. And do you believe that it is a solution that is a quick fix or a long-term solution? I think it's a quick fix, and more importantly, it picks up every child, right? Because okay. we have what they call a math problem, and All we right. have a solution to that. All right, Dr. Cito Narcisse is here with us for another segment. We'll hear what his solution is. I'm gonna ask him about his contract and how did what happened in Florida impact what's been going on in Baton Rouge? We'll talk about that with Dr. Narcisse and we'll talk with BRPD about their recruiting efforts. And like I said, one of Baton Rouge's most giving citizens is getting back into politics. I don't know why she's doing it, but we'll ask her about it coming up in the show. Y'all stay right there. All right, so Dr. Narcisse says he has a solution to this bus <clears throat> conundrum. Yeah. Spill it. Yeah, so uh, what we're gonna do is something that's different for Baton Rouge. As you know, we are very historical here. So we've always run buses by two tiers. And so I tell folks we have a math problem, right? We have X number of bus drivers and X number of routes, way more routes than bus drivers can hold. So what we have to do is do what they call three tiers. Three tiers mean three different rotations to allow much more efficiency and for making sure every kid across the city gets picked up. So what our goal is, is that we're going to start high school, parochial schools, because we also take parochial school buses early as 7 a.m. That time won't change because most high school kids go to school at that time. Mm -hmm. In our second tier, we're actually going to do all middle schools. Okay. And then in our third tier, we will have a set of elementary schools that we do. Which will start at what time? And those elementary schools will start at 9. So, and then, so 7, 7, 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock, 8, uh, 8 o'clock time, and then we'll have a 9 o'clock time. What about dismissal? And dismissal, um, well, so for dismissal, it, you know, we have the same set of hours. Dismissal will be 2.15 for high schools. Um, the 8 o'clock will be 325 for um, middle schools, and then for high, um, for elementary schools, it will be at 4 o'clock. So okay. that's going to be the change. So it's really a 35, 40-minute change. And the reason we have it that way is what people don't see is when people pick up buses, they pick it up by patterns, right? And it's proximity. And so there's a whole logic behind that. By doing uh, more tiers, you can actually cover mostly all the routes. And uh, when you cover all the routes, every child is not missed. Right mm -hmm. now, with our current model the reason we had to make an adjustment to the schedule is not every child gets picked up there are buses that miss spots and so where the adjustment how's that possible well I mean if you don't have enough bus drivers to run enough routes then the challenge is you have to depend on uh, bus drivers running like eight nine routes and that's impossible so that means they're doing even extra than what they usually do because usually the average route should be around about five to six routes for a bus driver if you do that then you do more efficiently but what this will do is it'll actually give us more bus drivers to cover more routes and more opportunities to get to buses when you need to fix them. It, so it's almost like I tell you it's a math problem, right? So mm -hmm. you, what you're doing is you're, co you're condensing the amount of routes because you have more opportunities for rotation. So, <clears throat> all right, we'll, how soon will this go into effect? All right, so the big thing is uh, tonight, or the board, the yeah, board has, has to approve it. They have to approve me to change start times. Okay. Once they approve that, the next day we have our set of communications. We're gonna give up parents a week out to yeah. prepare for the adjustment. So we'll keep the current uh, schedule we so have now. before or after Labor Day? So after Labor Day, so okay. the day after Labor Day is our D-Day. That's when okay. we begin to start the new routes. All right, so <clears throat> here's a question for you. As someone in the studio has a cell phone going, <laughs> <laughs> Did Broward distract you from the work here? Yeah. Absolutely not. Uh, Broward did not distract me from the work okay. here. I went, I went through the process and, uh, you know, it didn't work out, but, you know, I'm here. So yeah. the, the work still continues. So, yeah. you know, I know people try to make that there, but, you know, that, that, that's not the issue on why we have our challenge that we have here. How did that come about anyway? I mean, because that was one of the sticking points for people is that people didn't realize you were yeah. interested in being someplace else yeah. because you have a contract discussion going on. That's now. correct. I have a contract discussion. The reality is, you know, I tell folks I'm a father before a superintendent and uh, I made a request to one to stay. And, you know, we didn't get to a point at that time to discuss my contract. And so as you get close to the end of my contract, you know, I have to be thinking about my family. And so that's how I got into that. Why but, should the board 
extends you? Well, I would say, well, one, I want to be here. <laughs> but the second part is, you know, you can't keep changing superintendents and expect results. I mean, we, I would argue that out of all superintendents that have been here, I'm trying to fix challenges that have been here for a long time, yeah. and I'm not scared to face them, right? Yeah. And so I think that we have to be able to be honest, to be able to face those issues, and you want to have consistency, because I have a plan. Uh, when you look at our pathways plan, early childhood expansions, I like to see that pathway through. And I think we have a board that's willing to tackle those tough plans as well. I, I do want to, before we wrap the segment, I want to ask about the issue with cafeteria staff because mm -hmm. there were some questions about that. What's going on with that and what are what are your solutions? Yeah, so we're, you know, we've uh, given a cafeteria staff an increase uh, in terms of what they're doing the work. The board uh, and I've been working very hard trying to make sure that, you know, we're paying people right. And I told folks the way that we've been looking at it is that if we have to do a three-year run, three uh, three run, which is to be able to strategically look at our budget over time so in three years we can be able to pay all of the all of our employees but it, but we have to be strategic that way because there's so many moving pieces that happens in the budget uh, and, and in that process I you know I had a meeting with all the cafeteria workers all of them uh, we met at Glen Oaks High School had a conversation we talked about changes and shifts and and they were pretty happy and you know they they are um, the USDOE has said like you know we have one of the best uh, cafeteria uh, child nutrition program in the country right yeah. and so people don't know about that and so we you know we're working, we're working hard on that got about a minute left when are you rescheduling your state of the district for yeah so we're gonna be pushing that out until later September. Okay. Um, unfortunately, as you know, with the with everything with transportation, we said this is not the best time to do that yeah. because we have a lot of great things that are going on in, in East Baton Rouge, but right now we got to solve this particular problem. So once uh, everything works out well um, in terms of uh, the vote, we'll be able to get transportation away, and by the end of September, we'll have the state of the schools, and we'd love for you to be there. Well, I, I, I'll likely be there, and I want you to come here before then so we could talk again. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Dr. Narcisse. Thank you so All right, much. back with a member of Baton Rouge Police Department to talk about recruiting efforts there. We just got through a summer where actually homicide was down in East Baton Rouge Parish. We'll talk with Detective McCoy, Sergeant McCoy, I don't give him a promotion uh, on the show next.